Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here I have a very interesting question for you. Which function is essentially bigger? We have the square root of x versus the natural log of x. What do you think? Well, one easy way to do this is of course we can just take a look at the graphs of these two functions. And it's clear that the square root of x is above the natural log of x. So the clear winner is just the square root of x. But this is too boring because it was too easy, right? There was no competition. This is like saying a little kid is trying to fight a big guy. Yeah, but don't worry, I'm going to fix this for you guys and make this much more interesting. How about let's compare the cube root of x versus the natural log of x. What do you guys think? And if you want to take a look at the picture, here is the picture. Well, this is more interesting, huh? Because at first, cube root of x is above, but around 6 point something, natural log of x actually takes over, right? Hmm. So does that mean that natural log x is going to be the winner this time? What do you think? If you think that's the case, take a look at the picture again. Ah, <laughs> at some point, like around 90 something, cube root of x actually takes back, right? Wow. How would we know, right? Uh, are we just going to use the graph? Is it possible for us to actually figure this out mathematically? Of course, the answer is yes. Otherwise, how can I make this video, right? <laughs> Alright, here's the deal. I am using the word essentially bigger to mean that I want to compare the y value of the functions as x is approaching infinity, right? So that's what I mean by this. So here is what we can do. This is the check that we have to do. Because again, eventually means when x is approaching infinity, I just want to compare the y value of the functions right here. So the check that we have to do is take the limit, again, as x approaching infinity, and it doesn't really matter which one you put on the top. I'm just going to put the cube root of x on the top, and then divide it by natural log of x. Again, if the result is greater than 1, then that I know the top function is bigger, but if the result is less than 1, then I will know the bottom function will be bigger. Either way, we will know which one is bigger. So to do so, we can just do Laplace's rule because when you plug in infinity to here and here, the top is going to be infinity, and the bottom is also going to be infinity. So this is how you can compare infinity so in this kind of sense. So here's the deal. Because this is an infinity over infinity situation, we get to use Laplace's rule. So let's go ahead and do the derivative of this guy and also the derivative of the guy on the bottom. So as you can see, here we have to take the limit as x approaching infinity. And then for this right here, of course, you can look at this as x to the one third power. So do the power rule right here, bring the power to the front and minus one. So all in all, we get one third x to the negative two-third power. And then for the bottom one, again, you do the derivative. The derivative of natural log of x is just 1 over x. Very nice. And now let's just finish this, and we can do so simplifying by multiply the top and bottom by x. So that and that will cancel. And this is negative two-third, and this is just going to be 3 over 3. So all in all, we just have to take the limit as x approaching infinity. And we have to have one third, and then this is x to the one third. But if you put infinity into here, infinity to the one third power is infinity, times one third, still going to be infinity. So as you can see, this right here is going to be infinity. But you have to remember that we're trying to look at this number and compare it with one. This is bigger than one. So what does that mean? Because this is bigger than one, that means the top function is bigger. Alright, so the winner is this one. Alright, so you didn't really need to use the graph for it. And the truth is, you can have any radical function. You can have the 12th root of x. This is still going to win, but you just have to be patient. <laughs>
It's about seeing the concepts visually and interact with them so that they stick. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down to pieces so that you can tackle them at a little bit at a time. Remember, there is no tests or grades. Just pick a course that you like and then get started. If you make a mistake, no big deal because you can just always check out the explanations and learn out more. You can always learn at your own pace via their website or their app. There's always something for everybody, whether you want to just enhance your algebra skills or learn programming, or you want to learn some cutting edge topics such as cryptocurrency or quantum computing. And now you can use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenredpen, because this way you can also get 20% off discount to their annual premium subscription. Thank you for checking them out and thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. But now the question is, is it possible for us to figure out the point of intersections between these two functions? Again, the answer is yes, because otherwise, how can I make this video, right? <laughs> so here is the deal. Back in your pre-calculus class, unfortunately, we didn't have the tools to show you how to solve this kind of equations, because if you want to see the point of intersections, we will have to solve the cube root of x being equal to natural log of x, right? But we didn't have the tools. However, I know you guys have been watching my videos. Thank you so much. If you know how to use the Lambert W function, then yes, we will be able to find out the x values so that these two functions intersect. So let's go ahead and do that. To do so, well, I'm going to just look at this as x to the one third power, and this is, of course, natural log of x, right? And the deal that we are going to do is, remember, the lambda w function, what we really want to happen is, you want to have a little fish right here, times e to the same fish, y, because this way, you can actually get the fish back. And for more detail about the fish, I mean, the video about the lambda w function, just go ahead and check out my video in the description. Huh? Anyway, I want to somehow produce the e. This is how we can do it. I'm going to move this to the other side, but I'm actually going to write this part down first. Hopefully you guys don't mind. So I'm going to say this is equal to 1, but divide this on both sides. This is going to give us natural log of x right here times x to the negative 1 third power. Right? Why do we want to do that? Well, it's because here we have the x. Again, we want to introduce the e. We can rewrite the x as what? e to the natural log of x. Then we have the negative one third right here, right? And then we still have the natural log of x in the front, and we still have the one right here. Now, here is the deal. I'm going to use, yes, you know, things are serious when we are using the blue pen. This is our fish, right? Kind of like our fish, yeah. This is almost like the same fish, but this is missing negative one third. If it's missing negative one third, what do you do? Yes, you can just multiply both sides by negative one third. Aha! So right here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to multiply this by negative one third as well. Very, very nice. Why? Because now we can just take the Lambert W function on both sides. Here, you just get a fish back. So we just have negative one third natural log of x, and that's equal to, I'll just write this down as w of, this is of course just negative one third. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to multiply negative three on both sides and do e to the power on both sides. x is just equal to e to the negative three times the Lambert W function of negative one third, just like this, right? So this right here, is this the answer though? Kind of, right? Kind of. Why? The deal is, if you look at this, unfortunately, if you enter this on Wolfram Alpha, it only gives you one number. So I will tell you this number is approximately 6.405. I wrote it down in my notes over there. But yeah, this is kind of like the first answer, the answer that we saw earlier. But how about the 90 something number that we saw uh, earlier again? So let me show you guys this again. How can we find out that number? The thing is that for the Lambert W function, it has different branches. This is like the first answer that you get. So it's like the first branch. And usually what you do is you put a little zero right there. If you want to get the other answers, 
you will just kind of have to play around on Wolfgang Alpha by entering different numbers right here. So I'll show you on the screen like this. Oh. Oh. So the truth is, these two are the only real solutions for this equation. And uh, yeah, after 93.354 ish, cubed of x will never be beaten again <laughs> because we have that right here to show us, right? So that's pretty much it.